as usual with Excel, um, it can be a bit tricky keeping track of steps. So I advise between the two of you sitting next to each other, um, maybe one of you pays more attention to what's happening and the other one's working out you know, actually what you're going to punch in. I will go back and do it, but I can't do it endlessly because otherwise we'll never get anywhere. Okay. So the first thing we're going to create is the table that we've started to build. We're just going to do it. Oh, I forgot this is a touch screen. We're just going to do it much more efficiently. So we need to start with an X and a Y. Thank you. Okay, so let's do that. I'm not going to keep running around now. So here's an X and here's a Y. Guys, well, that was bigger than I intended. Okay, let's try that again. That's better. Okay. So, um, we've got our X and our Y rows. That's a bit too wide. That'll do. Okay. Now, across the top, we test out particular values of X, right? I think we had 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's fa how far we went. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the equation we were looking at was 2x squared, I'm actually going to, I told a lie, I'm going to put this on the whiteboard just because most of you don't have it on the same screen. Um, you've probably got it on your page though. It was 2x squared, was it minus 4x? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Now watch carefully. Shh. To get our computer to do this, to get our spreadsheet to do this, you need to um, use some fancy symbols. So the first thing you got to do is say equals. Why is that? What does that do? It's, it's going to calculate something because it's saying this is an equation now, it's going to be equal to. So I want 2x squared, so I'm going to say 2. But remember, 2x squared is actually shorthand for 2. What operation is hiding in there that we don't say? Multiply, right? Now there's no multiplication symbol on your keyboard, so you need to go shift 8 and use the asterisk. Okay. Now, um, the next thing we want is x, but the whole idea is the x values are these things up the top, right? So instead of saying x, I'm just going to click on this cell up here, right? Because that's what my x is for that value, okay? Now, again, I need to show you one more fancy symbol, and that's, that's it. Um, to get a power, you've got no power button on your calculator either, sorry, on your keyboard, so you need to press shift 6. This has the very um, affectionate name called the hat. So this is a hat, and um, it's to the power of 2. So I know it looks weird, but what this means is 2 times x squared, or raised to the power of 2. I can raise to the power of anything I like, but 2 is what I want. Okay. Now that's not the whole thing, I need all the rest of the pieces. right? Now this is easier, so I'm going to subtract 4 times, now what's next? What do I do here? I'm going to click on that cell, because that's x, and then I'm going to add 3. Okay, let me leave that there for a moment just so you can look at it. No Excel or anything? That's fine, that's okay. Alright, have you got it there? Now, at this point you can now hit enter and Hopefully, it should confirm for you the value that we got before. Looking good? Okay. So here comes the magic. Now, I'm not, I don't dare do it with my finger on here because I don't think my aim will be good enough. But do you notice there's this tiny little um, dot on the corner of your cell? There, it should be like a, a fatter green dot. I want you to click on that. Maybe I'll try. What's, what's the worst that could happen? I want you to click on it and drag it over. Okay, something like this. Oh, wait, no, no, I missed. No, no, that's not it either. <laughs> I'm just going to do it with a mouse. Okay, so I'm going to click it and drag it over because I want to complete the table, and voila. Okay, so if you're if you're no good with your manual dexterity and you can't aim and hit that like I can't, of course the other easy way is you just copy cells and you just paste them across. Okay, just for the sake of it, go over to 19, which happens to be my favorite number, and um, double click it. There we go. So the equation, of course, shh, stay with me, you talk. It looks ever so familiar except for a subtle difference. Um, there's the 2, there's the squared, there's the 4, there's the multiplication. What's different? F1. It's F1 instead of B1 because when we moved across, 
it carried the reference with it. So it was always looking at the cell above, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Thumbs up so far? It's not referencing the cell, it's referencing the cell position. Correct. So we call these um, relative references, okay? Okay, now, this is, yes. Uh, if you, you mean like how to get them across? Just copy it and then paste it across. That'll, that'll work for you. Just copy and paste. Okay, now it gets better. It gets better. So, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. What I want you to do now is to highlight your data there. And um, unfortunately, you know, everyone's version of Excel is just ever so slightly different. Uh, in fact, this is different to the version I practiced on. But it should be the thing I'm looking for shouldn't be too hard to find. Go up to the Insert tab right up the top. Insert. And you should be able to find some graphs. Okay, now the one I'm interested in is the scatter plot. Do you remember what scatter plots look like? So I think it's that set of dots there. That's really small. Um, on my older version of Excel, you just had to find the word scatter plot. So if I hit that, you get this shape. Okay. Now, what I've got is the points that should fit a parabola. You can kind of sort of see it. But we can do better than sort of see it. Uh, I want you to right click on one of these um, data points, any one should do. Right click on it. Ah, now, do you remember back in um, uh, DS5 or 6, or I can't remember which one it was, and we were looking at lines of best fit. Do you remember that? So we had lines of best fit because you had like a, a scatter plot of data and you're like, let's find a straight line that goes all the way through. But what we didn't talk about back then is the fact that, well, not all data wants to be a straight line. This clearly doesn't want to be a straight line. So when you go to add trend line, over on the right hand side, we didn't really talk about this before because we only worried about one kind of trend line, namely a straight one. You can see on the right hand side, you've got all these options. Now, a quadratic is a special kind of equation in a broader family of equations called polynomials. Do you see polynomial yes. over there? Now, what you can do is you can try different ones, but if you have a look at, say, well, let's, obviously the straight line is struggling a little bit. If I put exponential in there, it's still not that great. But when you hit polynomial, bam, it's right on. Which shouldn't surprise us because, of course, we made these data points out of a quadratic polynomial. Okay. Ah, so this is a quadratic, which means the power is 2. So you can change the power, you can make it higher. Um, because polynomials have all different ones. Okay, now, that was the first question. Okay, here's where... Uh, <laughs> <they're still laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I promise I'm almost done. Do you want to come in and wait? Or are you guys learning something over there? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll come and get you. Is that okay? Oh, okay yeah. that, thanks. They've got marking queries. Okay. Now, um, do you guys have your textbook also there? Can you load it up if you haven't already? We're in 12A, right? 12A? Okay. Actually, I'll write this up while we're at it. Okay, shh. Okay, you're 12. So in 12a, the data points you just created, the table of values, they corresponded to question one. That's, that's question one. Okay. Now before we leave it, I want you to have a look at the question now. Okay. Um, have a look at what it asks you. The first thing is create the data. So you guys can now fill in that table in your books using the fact that um, technology has done the job for you. Okay. Um, but that's not all it asks. It says, sketch the parabola. Now, we've used technology to help us, but you need to actually be able to draw this on a piece of paper. You're going to need to draw the Cartesian plane. One of the advantages you have is you can draw it wherever you like. This Cartesian plane doesn't include everything. What kinds of things are missing from this Cartesian plane? Have a look carefully. Look at the values is my clue. There are no negative values, right? Can you see um, over here, on our Cartesian plane, we know it goes negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Same thing for the y-axis down here. You guys can draw that part, and you can have the, in, the relevant coordinates and the relevant part of the graph there. Okay? 
Um, but there's one last question. Have a look at the actual question and what it asks. What does it say? Part B, C? Okay, now this is really important because you don't know necessarily what that means. So put your pens down and look up for a minute. When we talk about the minimum value, I'm going to remember not to lean on this because I keep highlighting things. The minimum value means what is the lowest this thing can possibly go? Okay, so lowest, not like leftmost or rightmost. So we're looking for this y value here. Now the y value you can read off of this table. Okay, so there it is. You would say the minimum value of this is one. Okay, but you get different functions and you get different kinds of behavior. So now that you know what this is going to be, you can um, go ahead and you can draw it in your own time. But let's just quickly modify this. This is the beauty of spreadsheets. We only need to modify a few things to make everything work for a new question.